Hey guys, welcome to iCode. I am Pallav and today in this video, we are going to look at the highlights of CRED and Swift India meetup that happened in CRED's head office in Bangalore a few days back. It was an amazing event where iOS developers of CRED discussed some, some iOS related stuff, good practices which they follow for their app and other speakers from Swift India discussed the ways to improve the app's accessibility. Before going ahead, I should make it clear that this is not a sponsored video and the only purpose of doing this is just to share the takeaways of the event with you guys. So let's get started. For those who don't know or haven't used the CRED app, let me tell you that it is having tons of animations. We all know that animations drive more attraction, makes the user experience more engaging, but at the same time, it comes with a downside and that is performance. So the first discussion was on how are they using animations without compromising performance. Let's look at this. So when design team suggests animation, developers look at the ways on how to implement it. There are different ways for it. We can, we can use core animation framework, we can use Lottie by Airbnb, or we can use videos. There would be other ways too, but these are the most common ways. The core animation route is way too complex because writing hundreds of lines of codes on your own and yet being skeptical that is it exactly like design or not, it's not worth it. So that leaves us with two options that is Lottie and videos. Let's see pros and cons of both. So with Lottie, this is how it works. Designers create the animation, then they share the JSON file for that animation with developers. And then developers pass the JSON to Lottie framework, which takes care of the rest. Under the hood, Lottie first passes the JSON using Codable and creates an animation object. Then this animation object is further used for animations. While Codable is something which we all prefer for JSON parsing, but when the JSON is way too complex, which happens in the case of long animations having longer duration, Codable does not give that efficiency. So what can be done here is that don't directly pass the JSON to Lottie, instead pass it on your own on a background thread. Create an animation model and then pass the animation model to Lottie. Other than this, there's one more downside with Lottie and that is CPU load. Since Lottie animations use CPU instead of GPU, it is less performant on that front. While with videos, this is not a problem because they use GPU. So after you initialize an AV player item with URL, that AV player item internally uses core animation and eventually GPU. So that's a plus point with video, but then there are other downsides like quality depends on resolution, size of the files, etc. So let's compare both. For videos, scalability depends on resolution, but that's not the case with Lottie. So Lottie is the winner here. In terms of file size too, Lottie uses JSON, which is definitely better than the size of videos. In case of animations, you cannot stream the video. To keep it smooth, it must be downloaded first. So that's one more downside for videos. But when it comes to CPU load, videos are better since they use GPU. We saw an optimization that Thread team has done for Lottie that they pass the JSON first and then provide the animation model. Let's look at the one that they have done for videos. So the cells in which they are playing the video, they don't play it immediately. Because if they try to play the video while cell is moving into the view, it is loading, it hits the performance. So if you see here, they play it only when cell is 75% in the view. They wait for cell to come into the view so that all the assets are loaded by that time and then play it to keep the scrolling, video and overall experience smooth. Next discussion was on the animations that they are doing programmatically. So not everything is a video or lottie. At times, writing the code and doing the things programmatically is needed and preferred. The example that they discussed was for this scroll bar having the ripple effect. So for this, they, they didn't use Bezier path or CA animation. Instead, they chose CA replicator layer. CA replicator layer replicates the copy of the layer without increasing the view hierarchy. This is how they have done it. They created a layer like this, replicated it to have three layers, changed the offset to have something like this, and then tied the offset change with the scroll offset of collection view. The developer of this component, Somesh Karthik, he has made this open source and I'll mention the GitHub URL for this repository in the description. You can clone it from there and have a detailed look. Other than this, speakers from Swift India discussed the importance of using accessibility features like voiceover, voice control, etc. The last discussion from Cred's team was on the automation framework that they have built using KMM. They are using it for writing tests. With the native frameworks like XAUI test or Espresso, there were certain challenges. First, efforts were 2x since Android and iOS devs have to write the test cases for both the platforms separately. Next, tests run in a different sandbox and the app run in a different sandbox. So accessing the data was not possible. To overcome these, they have come up with a framework using KMM 
which internally uses a local web server to solve the sandbox problem. To avoid the 2x efforts, they decided to write a platform abstraction layer which will be having the business logic. Since the business logic is same for both the platforms, this layer is exposed for writing the tests. It is still being tried by their team and has not been made open source yet. So that's pretty much for this short video. Hope you found something useful. If you like the content of this channel, you can consider subscribing to it. See you in the next video. Till then, happy coding and stay safe.